waking us up this morning, putting clothes on our back. We thank God because he is excellent and marvelous in all of his ways. And that the moment to testify, I will testify about the goodness of Jesus. My life has not always been easy, but God has been there by my side every step of the way because God will never leave or forsake us. So we thank God for walking by our side each and every day. We realize that God does not have to walk by our side, but the fact that he chose to walk by our side, I just lift my hands. Hallelujah. I just lift my hands. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I think about all the things that I've been through in my life. And I just lift my hands and say, thank you, Jesus. I should have lost my life, but I'm still here today. Thank you, Jesus. That kind of accident should have took me out, but thank you, Jesus. I had a lot of near-death experiences in my life. So the fact that I'm still standing right now, there's a reason why I get excited. There's a reason why I shout hallelujah. There's a reason why I give God the glory and all of the praise because everything that God has done for me. I don't have enough time to tell you about every single thing that God has done, but I want you to know that God has done great things in my life. Amen? Amen. I just thank God for this opportunity. I want to pray before I begin. Uh, Father God, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you, O God, for this time in your word. Father God, I am not the preacher, but you are God. We ask you to stand up tall, God, and preach through me in the name of Jesus. Let no flesh glory in your sight. It's not about me, O oh God, but it's only about you, O oh God. You could have used anybody else, but you saw fit to use me. So, Lord, we thank you just for being used by you, O oh God. And I bless your holy name, God. You're excellent. You are marvelous in everything that you do, God. We thank you so much, O oh God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, God. Can't stop saying hallelujah, God, because it is the highest praise, O oh God. And I realize, O oh God, my God, I thank you for the breath of my body, O oh God. It's your breath that you breathe into my body. Thank you, Lord, for the breath in my body, oh God. I would not be able to live if you took the breath away. So I thank you for every moment and every second that I have here, oh God. But Father God, I ask you to comfort those that may have lost somebody, God, who has to be by their side right now, God, because they need you, oh God. He said, blessed are those that mourn for they shall be comforted, oh God. Let the community of believers come together as we pray for one another, as we lift each other up, oh God, because we know that this life is not easy, oh God. We know that the trials and tribulations collapse over and over and over again, but Lord, we need you to stand up talk for us right now, God. In the name of Jesus, Lord, we need you, oh God. We cannot survive without you. We need you, oh God. God, we need you so much, and I thank you, oh God, again for this time. I'm careful to give you the glory, hallelujah, the praise and the honor. In the name of Jesus, I pray, amen. 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 So I thank God for, again, this opportunity. I'm happy that my computer just locked away. <laughs> so now I'm going to open it back up again. Um, there we go. Okay, so uh, today's message is, the title is called About That Life. Everybody say, About That Life. About that life. Say it louder, About That Life. So we're going to talk about what life I'm talking about in just a moment. My purpose in this is to encourage believers that if they claim to walk with Jesus, they really need to walk with Jesus. Amen. If you say that you're a follower of Christ, you need to really be about that life. Some people say that they follow Jesus, but their lives is different from what they claim. Some people say they follow Jesus, but they don't love their brother. They're not, you know, kind to one another. They disrespect one another. And that's That shouldn't be. If you're a follower of Christ, you're supposed to love everybody. Amen. I'm going to say again, if you're really a follower of Christ, you're supposed to love everybody. But if you're not really walking in love, how can we say that we follow Jesus? Because we know that Jesus, you know, he loved the people. And we have to do the same thing that he did. So as I um, get into this, so a long time ago, I am a behavior coach. And I work with a lot of uh, at-risk teens. So a long time ago, I was working at a treatment facility with these young boys. And there was one particular kid. He had the biggest mouth of the whole school. He would talk trash to everybody. He talk trash to the staff. He talk trash to the kids. He gonna beat them up and all this other stuff. But one day we had a new kid that came in and the new kid wasn't having that. So he began to run his mouth at this new kid and the kid got so mad, he punched him so hard that he broke his jaw. And that kid had to get taken to the hospital, but the crazy part was when he came back, because all the talking that he was doing, he always running his mouth. It was crazy to see that he had to get his mouth, mouth wired shut. And he couldn't say nothing for a long time. So, of course, the kids were making fun of him. He was like, oh, you were talking about that trap, and you got beat up. <clears throat> it's the same way in our Christian life. Some of us were late. Some of us have been running our mouth, saying that we are, you know, for God I live and for God I die. But when things hit the fan and the battles of this life come, some can back up what they were saying. Does that sound familiar? We all know somebody that was like that. If you look at even Peter, uh, Peter, disciple of Jesus, he believed in Jesus, but when things hit the fan, he acted like he didn't even know Jesus. How many times do we go through the calamities of life, we begin to deny Jesus with our behavior, begin to, you know, stop praying as much, we stop reading our Bibles as much, just because things 
car going the wrong way. Uh, but we thank God for Peter because we know that Peter goes on to launch the church of Jesus Christ and he did great works with God. So even if you have moments where you, you know, you claim to do something but you may have denied Jesus in your actions, but there's still an opportunity for you to get back up. There's still an opportunity for you to do it right the second time. God is not done uh, with you yet. Hallelujah. I uh, hope y'all praying for me. So, I'm going to keep on going. Sorry about that. So, I'm going to testify for a moment. I want to talk to about, you know, there's a time in my life where, like, you know, I preach the Bible, you know, I'm all about God and all of that. But there's times in my life when I didn't practice what I preached. You know what I mean? It's easy to say so, but do you, when you really have the follow through, it's easy to say that I really follow Jesus, but behind closed doors, I really want to follow Jesus. See, 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 God had to convict me of that. Why? Because that's not the way it's supposed to be. If I'm really going to stand before the people, I'm, I'll be on Facebook all the time talking about Jesus. If I'm going to do all of that, I really need to walk and act like Jesus. Amen? Amen. I have to be just like him. I cannot do the things that I want to do. Jesus said, if you're going to follow me, you must deny yourself, take up your cross, and follow after me. That means so I cannot do what I want to do. I have to submit to the scripture and the scripture alone. The Bible said, man should not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. That means every single word, I have to live by that. And we get into the book of James, the first chapter. And uh, Brother James, you go ahead and throw that scripture on the screen. So we're going to talk, we're going to bring some scriptures up and we're going to continue talking about this. Hallelujah. So as we look at James, the first chapter, the 19th through the 20th verse, it says, My dear brothers and sisters, understand this. Everyone should be quick to listen. Everybody say quick to listen. Slow to speak. And slow to anger. Um, okay, we'll go. For human anger does not accomplish the righteousness of God. The 19th verse says again, verse says to be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to anger. Can I testify again? <laughs> I'm known for running my mouth. There's times where I get upset and I just kind of vent and I just begin to go in on somebody. You know what I mean? God's still working with me on that. Uh, but one thing I realized, if I look at the book of Proverbs, let me give you some wisdom real quick. Proverbs uh, 29 and 11. Can you go to Proverbs 29 and 11, bro? Uh, he's going to put that up in just a moment. As he does that, I'm going to keep on going. Proverbs 29 and 11 says, A fool utters all of his mind, but a wise man keeps it until afterwards. Um, another verse said like this, The fool expresses all of his anger, and the wise thinks with his mind. And another <laughs> version says it, A fool gives full vent to his anger, but a wise man holds it in check. We must learn as believers to not always say the first thing that comes to our mind. As believers, we shouldn't always try to give people a piece of our mind. Sometimes we have to learn how to be quiet. Sometimes we have to learn how to just say nothing and let it go. Because you can keep on, you know, harboring of anger and keep the, you know, the strife to be going, but we have to learn how to let that stuff go. Because at the end of the day, you go find yourself in a position where you got hatred in your heart. You don't want to have hatred in your heart for anybody. I know I don't. I don't want that to be because I want to have, because the Bible says to follow peace with all men. What that means is we have to actively make a decision that we're going to follow peace with all men. Some people may be tripping, they may be running out, but we have to learn how to not allow them to get to us, to get, continue to walk with Jesus. Amen? Because we don't want to allow people to get us out of character. We'll talk about that for a moment. Oftentimes, people will try to push buttons and try to get you out of character. Uh, but it's up to us to not allow people to get us out of character. And we're going to get to the character that we're talking about, which is having the character of Jesus Christ. We're going to get to that scripture in just a moment. Uh, James 1 and 21 um, says it like this. Therefore, ridding yourself of all moral filth and the evil that is so prevalent, we know that evil is everywhere, right? How many receive the implanted word which is able to save your souls? Hallelujah, hallelujah. We have to get rid of all this stuff that surrounds us. You know, it's funny though, every time we try to do the right thing, evil is always there. Paul said, every time I try to do good, evil is always present. It's funny, when I was out there in the world, it was easy to sin. It was easy to do whatever I wanted to do. But the moment that I tried to say, you know what, I'm going to follow Jesus. Now, all of a sudden, now, it's a struggle for me to even follow Jesus. Why? Because, you know, things are going crazy in my life. I got storm after storm after storm. Trials and tribulations going on in my life. So I find myself in a position where I'm not being fruitful in the Lord. I don't know if you can relate to that. Sometimes we go through stuff. You know, if we're not careful, we become unfruitful in God. Why? Because we're too busy being consumed with the cares of this life. 
You know, and then, so as I keep on going, as we move up the field from us, we cannot walk like the world, we cannot talk like the world. We cannot be nothing like the world. God has called us out to be different. Yeah. Amen? Amen? We have to be different. We can't be like everybody else. It's easy to do It's easy to do the things that everybody else does, but it takes a special person to say, you know what? I'm going to take the narrow path. Hallelujah. We know that it's a narrow path for Jesus, but we have to make a decision so we can follow down that path. We know there's distractions. Amen? Amen. There's distraction in this life that's trying to get us off kilter. There's distraction in this life that's trying to get us to go astray. But we have to remove those distractions from our lives. Say, you know what? I'm not going to allow the distraction to stop me. I'm going to follow after Jesus. I'm going to follow with all of my heart, mind, soul, and strength. I'm not going to allow anything to stop me from walking with Jesus. You know, the enemy wants you to stop walking with Jesus, so he's going to put a bunch of stuff in your way. You know what I mean? Why? Because he does not want you to follow Jesus. He wants you to follow your own self. Oftentimes, you know, we find ourselves and we follow our own selves, but we have to learn how to deny ourselves. Amen? Amen. 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 I want to keep on going because I've got a lot of things to cover, so I don't want to take too much time in this. Uh, but our scripture, our main scripture for the day, you already got it on the screen, in James 1, 22, and 24. It says, but be doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving yourselves. What that means is we have to be a doer of the word. If we're not a doer of the word, it means that we're not applying it to our lives and being obedient to the word of God. We deceive ourselves. It's not good enough to hear the word of God over and over again. We go to church service after church service. We hear a lot of different messages. You go on YouTube, there's a bunch of people preaching. On YouTube, there's so much word out there, so many people preaching. But it's all fine and nanny. But if we listen to what they're saying, we're not actually applying it to our lives, then what, what is it? Because if anyone, we keep on going Twitter verse says, because if anyone is a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like someone looking at his own face in the mirror where he looks at himself goes away and immediately forgets what kind of person he was. But the one who looks intently into the perfect law of freedom and preserves in it, you have to preserve, preserves in it and is not a forgetful hearer, but a doer who works, this person will be blessed in what he does. Hallelujah. So we deceive ourselves if we believe that, again, that we have this relationship with Christ, but we're not a doer of his word. Uh, it's not good when we read the word, go to church, like I said, and not follow Jesus. But we will be blessed in everything we do if we persevere. Now, perseverance is hard sometimes, right? Yeah, yeah. Sometimes perseverance is very, very difficult. It's easy for me to get up here and say, you know, we have to preserve his word, amen. But sometimes it's not that easy because we have to actually deal with life it becomes more difficult. Amen. Can I get a witness that you have to deal with situations in your life and it was hard for you to persevere? How can I keep my mind on God? How can I keep my mind on you know being obedient in his word when I got all this hell breaking loose around me? Sometimes when we go through, you know, don't get me wrong, the word of God says we're gonna be obedient to his word, but sometimes we got so much stuff going on, we can't even think about that. So we're so weighted down. But I'm here to encourage somebody today, don't be weighted down. Get into the presence of God. The Bible says, where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. I'm going to say it again. Where the Spirit of God is, there is liberty. So when you're going through, that is the time to get in His presence even more. That means get down on your knees, begin to pray, listen to worship music, do whatever you got to do to get in His presence. I'm telling you, He will lift the heavy burden off of you. I've been sad many times in my life, but God lifted the heavy burden off of me. Why? Because I got into His presence. Hallelujah, hallelujah. And I thank God because he even, God even grabbed me into His presence because there's sometimes when you feel sometimes Way you don't even feel like praying, you don't feel like reading your Bible sometimes when you're going through the trials of life. But I'm here to let you know just pray, hallelujah. The Bible says, Be anxious for nothing, but every single situation, make your request known, be made known to God, hallelujah, hallelujah. He will give you peace. We thank God for His peace. I'm gonna keep on going. So, as we look at the, the book of First John, the fifth chapter through the ninth verse, here we go. Thank you, bro. Um, a second point is out of the darkness. Everybody say out of the darkness. Out of the darkness. All right, first John says like this. This is a message we have heard from him and declared to you that God is light and there is absolutely no darkness in him. If we say we have fellowship with him and yet walk in darkness, we are lying and not, not practicing the truth. The seventh says, if we walk in the light as he himself is in the light, we have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus is son cleanses us 
from all sin. If we say we have no sin, we are deceiving ourselves and the truth is not in us. But the Bible says that if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to, I'm uh, sorry, I, 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 I remember the King James verse, I'm gonna read it to If we confess our sins, he's faithful and righteous to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Don't you love God? That even though we make the wrong decision, that we can confess our sins, that he's faithful and just to forgive us. Uh, aren't you excited that it's not based on our ability? Well, guess what? If it was based on my ability, I would be in hell right now. But I thank God for his amazing grace. Hallelujah. His amazing grace that saved me. That my God can save the rich like me. So uh, that's why I get so excited. Because if you knew all the stuff that I was into before, you'd be like, you'd be praising God with me too. Because I've been through a lot of different things. I've done a lot of things that I was guilty of. But we thank God for his grace. Hallelujah. Amen. We're saved by grace alone. Hallelujah. Amen. We're saved by, through grace. Sorry, we're saved by grace through faith alone in Jesus Christ alone. Hallelujah. Amen. According to the scriptures alone, for the glory of God alone. I thank God for His grace. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. I thank you, O oh God, for saving me, O oh God. It wasn't based on my abilities because guess what? I've done the wrong thing over and over again because we all fall short of the glory of God. Nobody in this place that are will watch the video. Nobody is perfect. But we thank God that we're imperfect, but God is perfect. Hallelujah. Uh, hallelujah, hallelujah. So we thank God for Jesus for taking the sacrifice for us. I thank God it wasn't based on me. Yes. But as I keep on going to stay in touch with the scripture, we can't habitually walk in darkness and claim that we have a relationship with Christ. Now, as God does say, yes, we all fall short of the glory of God, but it's a difference between falling short and then habitually walking a certain way. We have to make sure... Because at the end of the day, it is what it is. We have to deny ourselves to follow Jesus because he is the one that is in charge. The book of Luke, the sixth chapter, the 46th verse says it like this. Why did you call me Lord, Lord, and don't do the things I say? So when he says that he's your Lord, that suggests that he is in charge over everything that you do. That he is in charge over your behavior. How many of us can honestly say that he is also our Lord? Often that we say he's our Lord and Savior. Yes, he's our Savior. That's already taken care of. But is he your Lord too? Yeah. Only you can answer that question. Yeah. We have to allow God be the Lord of our lives. When we try to do our own thing, we often going to find ourselves in the wrong place. How many times did I not allow the God to be the Lord of my life? Like a whole bunch of times. I went through things I, didn't, I shouldn't have to go through, but I went through them because I'm hard in it. <laughs> I, know, I know I'm not the only one that's hard. I've been, I've been very hard headed in my life. So this thing that I know I need to do better on, I keep on doing it over and over again. And that makes me more excited because God, you still deal with me even though you know my imperfections. And you know, I probably should have got it right a long time ago, but I thank God for always being there for me. Uh, but I have to realize as I grow in Christ, we're trying to grow in Christ, right? As we grow in Christ, there has to come a time that he becomes the Lord of our lives. And we allow him to direct every part because he knows better than we do. Until we realize that he knows better than us, we're gonna keep on having the struggle of life. God knows better than us. Why? Because he is the beginning and the end. Amen. He's seen the future. He knows all. So we have to learn how to allow him to be the Lord over our life. The Bible says to acknowledge him in all of your ways and he will direct your path. Until we start really acknowledging him, how can he direct our path? Amen. The Bible is written for us to help navigate life. But if you don't read it and apply it, then that's really on you. I'm going to keep on going. Uh, first John, the second chapter, you can throw it on there. Uh, Jay, <clears throat> I love the scripture. It says, This is how we know that we know if we keep his commandments. So we said again, This is how we know that we know Jesus if we keep his commandments. The one who says, I have come to know him and yet doesn't keep his commandments is a liar and the truth is not in him. Well, wait a minute, John. John talked kind of rough. John out here calling people liars if you're not backing up what you say. Just like I gave the example earlier, but that boy that run his mouth, he cannot back up what he says. So if we're claiming again that we're following Jesus, we never be we have to be able, I'm sorry, to back up, you know, what we're talking about. Amen. Amen. Uh, but it goes on to say, but whoever keeps his word, hallelujah, truly, sorry, but whoever keeps his word, truly in him, the love of God is made complete. This is how we know that we are in him. The one who says he remains in him shall walk just as he walked. Hallelujah. Uh, First John, uh, as I keep going, the second chapter, not to 11 verse says, the one who says he is in the light, but hates his brother, I'm gonna say it for a moment, or sister is in the darkness until now. 
We have to love our brothers and our sisters, even when it becomes difficult. The Bible says to love our enemies. As we think about love, we think about the book of Corinthians, the first chapter, hallelujah. It says, love is patient and love is kind. Everybody say, love is patient and love is kind. We have to love our brother just like Jesus commanded us to love them. So no matter who they are, no matter what background they come from, we have to learn to love them with the love of Christ. How many times do we mistreat people? How many times do we judge people? But God is calling us to love them. Where would the church be today if we just focus on the love part? Man. Allow God to take care of all the rest of the other stuff. Don't worry about it. Just learn how to love people. But we're too busy trying to judge people, hallelujah, that we missed the mark. God called us to love our neighbor. Hallelujah. It's a commandment. It's just, the first greatest commandment is to love the Lord that God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength. But the second greatest commandment is to what? To love your neighbor as yourself. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So I'm going to keep on going. Uh, but the one who loves his brother or sister, I'll say here. So the one who does love his brother, right, or his sister remains in the light, and there is no cause of stumbling in him. But the one who hates his brother or sister is in the darkness, walks in the darkness, and does not know where he is going, because the darkness has blinded his eyes. Like I said already, we really have to show the love of Christ. And I know that I'll, I know the world would be a better place if everybody decided to love. But as I go to my next scripture, the first John, the four and the twentieth verse. It says that if anyone says I love God and hates his brother or sister, he is a liar. But the person who does not love his brother or sister whom he has seen cannot love God whom he has not seen. Hallelujah. And we have this command from him. The one who loves God must also love his brother and sister. If you look at the book of 1 John, he spends a lot of time talking about loving your brother. That's so important. How many of us need love in this life? How many of us really need that real, authentic love? Man. Not that fake love that the world got to offer. I don't know about you, but I've, been a lot, I've seen a lot of fake love, and that's heartbreaking. But we need real love, hallelujah. I, don't, I need real love in my life, hallelujah. Man. So I thank God for his love, because his love encourages us to love people the right way. Uh, but I'm keep on going on and on about it, because I've been reading John, you know, all week long, and he kept on saying that over and over again. So I have to begin to examine myself, think about all the people that I deal with, and make sure I actually love them. Amen. And if I'm not walking in love with them, then I need to go back to them and ask them for forgiveness. Sometimes we may hurt somebody, but we have to learn how to go to one another and say, you know what, I was wrong. We have to learn how to admit when we do the wrong thing. Hallelujah. Now, my third point is my favorite point. <laughs> uh, we find out that Jesus was about that life. Let me read Matthew 26, 5 and 53. I love this is when Jesus got arrested. So when Jesus got arrested, you know, they're arresting him. And I'm going to read the scripture. It says, they, then they came up, took hold of Jesus and arrested him. At that moment, one of those with Jesus reached out his hand and drew his sword. He struck the high priest's servant and cut his ear off. That's kind of a uh, scene, right? This, this is right he gets betrayed regarding the assembly. Judas, Judas betrays him. And then they begin to arrest him. Um... He, I'm sorry, he struck the high priest and the servant cut it out, right? The 57 verse said, Then Jesus told him, Put your sword back in its place because all who take up the sword will perish by the sword. Hallelujah. If you live by the sword, you will die by the sword. 53 verse says, Or do you think that I cannot call my father and he will provide me here and now with more than 12 legions of angels? Basically, what Jesus was saying, I'm going to lay my life down right now, but don't get it twisted that you're arresting me. At any moment, I could ask my father, he can send 12, more than 12 legions of angels down right now and pretty much take, take care of the situation. Uh, but we thank God that he didn't decide to do that. He decided to go to the cross for me and you. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank God that he went to the cross. Hallelujah. Amen. Think about it. He's God, right? He comes down to earth and he allowed these people to disrespect him, to spit on him, to, to put nails in his hand, put nails in his feet. But he did it for us. He didn't have to do it. At any point, he could have hit him with a Thanos snap. Snapped him and everybody would have been out of existence. But we thank God that he did not do it. When I watch, when I watch, see, I love Marvel movies. When I watch, <laughs> when I watch uh, Infinity War, the first thing I thought about was God. I'm like, God really could snap us out of existence if you wanted to. But I thank God that he did it. And I love another thing that Jesus said, John 10 and 10, he said, no one takes it from me. He was talking about his life. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down on my own. Hallelujah. He said, I lay it down on my own. Nobody took his life. He laid his life down. Hallelujah. 
and I have the right to lay it down, and I have the right to take it up again. I have received this command from my father, but because he was about that life, he took it like a champ. Hallelujah. In the garden of Gethsemane, he took it like a champ. He said, nevertheless, God, not my will, but your will be done. When God was in the garden of the Gethsemane, Jesus began to sweat. And they say he sweat was like drops of blood. So Jesus was stressed out. And he said, Lord, is there another way? But but there wasn't another way. So he said, nevertheless, God, not my will, but your will be done. How many of you are grateful to that Jesus said, not my will, but your will be done. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I thank God that he decided to, you know, be faithful to death on the cross. Hallelujah. He was faithful to the end. Hallelujah. He kept on walking to the cross, even though there was being on him and spit on, but he still went to the cross for me and you. Hallelujah. I thank God for going to the